There's this common question that people ask themselves often when they're in situations that they don't like, and it's why me? Some people say, why me, God, or why me, or why is this happening to me? But really, that's not the right question. I mean, think about it. If you actually had the answer as to why this is happening to you, would that change how you feel about it? Would it really change the situation? I think a lot of times what people do is they think that if they know the reason why something's happening to them, that somehow that will help it feel better or it'll somehow help the situation. They can logically think through, oh, well, if I just would have done this and I just would have done that, then this wouldn't have happened to me. Or, well, next time I'll know. I better avoid this or I better do this instead and then I won't get into this situation. It's really an ego trip if you think about it because our ego wants to resolve things logically. And there's things that happen in life, actually a lot of things, in fact, maybe most things that happen that the emotional aspect of it are more of a component to it than the logical aspect. But we try to logically work our way through it to see if maybe somehow the logic, figuring it out, is going to make it better. And it never does. I mean, think about times where something has happened to you and if you thought, really, really think about it, go into it and think, okay, well, if I would have known the reason why this happened to me, would it, would it have made me feel better? Would it have changed the situation for me, really? Usually after the fact, if you knew what happened prior, the only reason that that would satisfy you is because then you'd be able to beat yourself up more about it. Then you could say, oh, well, if I just would have done this and I just would have done that, and if I would have changed what I said or who I said it to, or maybe if I would have just given this person this thing, or if this person would have done this thing for me, then, or if I would have taken my son to the doctor earlier, or if blah, 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 whatever it is, then we might have had a different chain, or a different course of events. But how does that help? I mean, you can't go into the past and fix it. You can't reverse time and change what's already happened. So no, actually asking why me does nothing for you. It doesn't help you at all. And getting stuck in that loop of why me, why me, why did this happen to me? Oh, it's almost like you're saying, poor me, poor me. Somebody has it in for me. Karma, God, other people, the world, the universe, it hates me. And, and that's why this is happening or something. But it doesn't matter. That is not going to get you to feel better about the situation. And really, that's what we're really looking for. Everything that drives us in life is this seeking of happiness, seeking of something that's going to make me feel better. Something that's going to make me feel better. That's what drives every decision that we make. And it's not a decision that we make on a collective level, although sometimes we think that is the case. Oh, I'm part of this group and we want this. No, really, it is about me. I mean, think of this from your perspective. Me, 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 me. That's all you really care about is me. Oh, yeah, family. And you think, okay, yeah, I do this because of my kids or I do this because of my family. Or No, you don't. You do it because you think that by doing this thing for your family that it will make you feel better. Really, that's what it is, is you feel better, you feel justified, you feel like you're doing the right thing because of your programming, which is really about you. So that brings me to an interesting thing when I talk, think about 
this thing where you know people justify doing stuff or because they justify it because of a group okay that and I may refer to this in the future too because there's other aspects of this movie that I thought were interesting but in particular in this Steve Jobs movie from 2015 there's a, a scene in which Steve Jobs is preparing for the launch of one of his one of his creations I don't remember if it was Lisa or there was the Lisa computer and then there was also the iMac and in both of those there were two scenes one which he was just getting ready to launch the iMac and and that was the later one and then the other one where he's just getting to, ready to launch the Lisa computer and both of those events where there was going to be this launch that occurred in an auditorium Steve Wozniak Steve Jobs old buddy shows up and in both scenes in both events he was asking Steve Jobs to acknowledge the Apple II team for their contributions to Apple. And in both instances, Steve Jobs refused to acknowledge the Apple II team. Even though the Apple II was such a successful product for Apple, and it was what was holding up profits in the company and keeping it from going bankrupt, Steve Jobs would not acknowledge this team when he was making a launch of a new product because he didn't his justification was, hey, I'm launching something t new and totally different. I don't want to be bogging the new product down in any thoughts of the old product, which is the Apple II. Now, from Steve Wozniak's perspective, he was saying, I want you to acknowledge the Apple II team. But what was really, it, what was really going on here? Okay, he said he wanted Jobs to acknowledge the Apple II team, but really, he wanted Jobs to acknowledge him. Wozniak never felt approved by Jobs. Even though they launched the Apple II product and it became a big success, Jobs and Wozniak disagreed on making the Apple product a open product where you could actually add cards to it to add new features. Jobs didn't want to have anything to do with that. He only wanted, he wanted it to be limited in what it could accomplish. And those things had to be all tied to Apple products. But Jobs, I mean, uh, Wozniak wanted there to be ability to add other features, other, um, and, and scale up the, the device so that um, third party equipment could be added and connected to it. Now, the Apple II ended up with these features that Wozniak wanted in it, but that was a point of contention between Jobs and Wozniak because Jobs wanted an isolated system. He wanted something that couldn't connect to anything else, which is kind of an interesting psychological aspect because Jobs himself was very had a problem with connecting with everybody else. Okay, so what does this have to do with asking why? Because, well, I kind of got off on a tangent and I was talking about groupthink and, and Wozniak basically saying that he wanted, some, he wanted it to happen for the team, but really he, want, he was talking about himself. He was part of that team and he was the one who kept that Apple II going while Jobs even left the company. And so... Wozniak wanted acknowledgement for himself. And so if we reel this back to what's really important to me, what's really important to me is to feel approved of, right? What's real important to me is to feel love, to feel happiness. Happiness ultimately resolves into love, but Ultimately, for me, I want to feel happiness. And there's, this th there's things that I do because it drives me to happiness. Or I think it'll drive me to happiness. So if you think about the things that you really want in life, maybe something that you don't have right now, but you think, man, if I just had this, I would see, be so much happier. If I, if I got this one thing, if I 
had this one relationship, if this person treated me this way, if you think of those things that either you would attain or that somebody would do for you or that uh, some change in, in, in your life that you think would be a benefit to you and don't mask it in, oh, you know, I want world peace and all the hunger in the world gone and all that bullshit. I'm not saying that that's bad, but the reality is that, again, that's programming. That's something that you feel that you want done because you think it's going to help you personally, really, okay? Because then, apparently, if all the world's problems were solved, then you wouldn't be busy thinking about all the issues in the world that are upsetting you right? I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. But think about what it is that if you had it now, it would make your life better. That thing or that situation that you think would make your life better really won't. I mean, you think it will, but if you had it right now, I mean, you can probably imagine all of the aspects of it that would be so exciting to you and so great and and um, how you would enjoy this and that. But you know what? After a week, a month, six months, a year, all that newness, all that excitement wears off and now you're at a different level. You've leveled up and now at this new level, you need something else to give you that high, to give you that excitement, to give you that thrill, to to keep you from feeling bored and inadequate. So, I bring this up because when you go back to why me, it's not going to help you. Asking why doesn't help. But the feeling that you get from having what you want is really what you're after all the time, which is happiness, which is joy, which is excitement, which is some thrill, which is this feeling that is within you that you, 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 sometimes you can even taste it. It's just, a, it's that joy, that excitement and, and it comes and then it goes and it only comes in spurts. Usually in our lifetime, it only comes in spurts. But if you could have that consistently, what more would you want in life? If you could just have that joy consistently, what more would you want in life? So what is the question to ask instead of why me? Yeah, the right question to ask is can I say yes to what's happening to me right now? That's the right question. And why is that the right question? Because if you say, why me? The answer to it, if it came to you, would just help you logically try to resolve why this, is it, this issue is a problem, or I mean, why this issue happened, and maybe something that you might be able to do as a corrective action in the future to prevent it from happening again, but that won't help you feel better. Corrective, knowing what a, my, a possible corrective action is won't help you feel better. It'll make your ego feel better because now you've logicized it. Now you can explain it. And now you feel more powerful egotistically. But emotionally, you're at the same place. And sometimes we say, okay, well, I've, if I work through it logically, then it'll help me resolve the emotion. Actually, what you end up doing is suppressing the emotion. You push it down. You're distracting yourself with this logic. The logic of figuring it out, which you think somehow resolves it, but it doesn't. It just distracts you from what the real issue is, which is how you feel about the situation. By asking, can I say yes to this situation? Can I welcome the situation? What you're actually doing is causing, is you're, you're, you're bypassing your ego because you're asking yourself a question that has to be answered emotionally. 
Now, there's certain cognitive or, or logical aspect to this, but you will actually feel it in your body because the first time you ask, can I say yes to this, you're going to feel this, this probably a retraction or a, um, a clutching feeling in your chest, a resistance. And when you feel that resistance, that is key. That's what you want to feel because you don't want to let it go. You don't, you don't want to not feel it. You don't want to push it down. You don't want to distract yourself from it. You want to allow yourself to feel it because it's in feeling it that you can actually let it go. Let it come up and let it go. And by asking yourself, can I say yes to this situation? You're bringing that feeling in and you're allowing yourself to experience it. And then you just keep asking, you know, can I say yes to this situation? And you'll probably say, no, I can't. That'll be your, your resistant, eh, I don't want to. Can't say yes to this, but that's okay. Just keep asking yourself. Can I say yes to this situation? It might help to preface it too. Like, if it would make me feel better, could I say yes to this situation? Has resisting it made me feel better? Likely not. So if I say yes to this situation and it might make me feel better, could I just say yes? Just right now, just in this moment, could I say yes to it? And then ask yourself again, if, if saying yes to this situation just might make me feel better, could I say yes to it? Could I welcome it? And then do it again. And keep doing that and just feel the resistance, which starts as like a clutching fist in your chest. It begins to open up little by little. And it just begins to relax. And then you can just let it go. And let it go. And let it go. So go ahead and try that. Remember, the wrong question is why. And the right, the right question is, can I say yes to this situation? I leave that for you today. Have a great one.